Here we are again, then, back at the British Motor Museum down in Gaydon in Warwickshire for Rustival 2. Now, as usual, I'm going to wander around because my channel is primarily American cars and old British stuff and mostly old Fords. I'm going to have a wander around, see how many American cars we can find and see what old Fords we can find. Now, I've just spotted a couple of cars coming in and one of them is a really nice old Ford. looks in lovely condition. So I'm going to see if we can find that to start with and I'll wander around everything else that's here. This place is massive. And the first of which is this absolutely fantastic Ford Zodiac. That's from 1967. Just been speaking to the owner very briefly, who tells me that it is the three litre Essex. And apparently he's been all over the country in it, and he's also been abroad in it. What a lovely looking car. You just don't see these in this kind of condition anymore. Absolutely amazing. I love that. You know, of course, for one of the oddities, another big thing here, a lot of vehicles here today, the little Renault Twingo. Now, look at that. Not only is there a Renault Twingo there, but look at this. There's actually a baby Twingo. Not only is it a baby Twingo, but by the looks of it, it's an automatic baby Twingo. Really like that. Definitely one of the oddities that's here today. Now, of the American vehicles here today, I found this lovely Dodge StarQuest with a V8 Magnum. All the way from Texas, if the number plate's correct. Day van, spend the day at the beach anywhere you want to. What a lovely thing. Obviously the StarQuest conversion done by StarCraft over there in the States. Comes with a spare wheel carrier and ladder to get on the roof. Although I don't know if that's a fiberglass roof or not. So whether it's uh, something you'd want to climb up in. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> You know, think by the looks of it, it'll obviously be an American, it'll be an automatic. Yes, it is, and we can say it there, but column shift automatic, lovely centre console with just a smaller, minute empty coffee cup there in the dashboard, and another V8, but this time a V8 for the British market. Only although it looks like a V8, it's actually not, it's the 2600. So that's the, uh, the 2.6, but lovely this type of rover. Never had one yet. There's always a chance I've left the sunroof open, so we'll just have a quick look inside there. Do like the Rovers, especially this one. It's in such wonderful condition as well. Found a rather unique mini clubman, apparently known as Frankie. Well, I don't think it has any bonnet at all, by the looks of it. I think there's there's some pins there, so the bonnet may... Oh, the bonnet's there on the roof. So the bonnet's just been taken off to show the fact that it's got a Rover engine in it. I think that's a K-series engine, but I could be wrong. But what a wonderful conversion. Bucket seats, race harnesses. Definitely a very unique and wonderful looking vehicle. And as usual, somewhere like Russellville, you'd expect to see a handful of two CVs. Three of them sitting here from varying years. All looking wonderful and resplendent in the varying colours. It's a lovely 2 litre Triumph for Tess, around about 1967 as well, full convertible on this one. Glorious condition inside, love that red interior. I think that's leather, I'm not going to touch it because obviously not my vehicle, but the car itself looks absolutely amazing. do like the look of that, not very often you see one of those in the UK with the roof down, especially not lately, all the weather we've had. And here's one of the true iconic American cars, 1967 Mustang automatic now it's probably going to be either a 289 or a 302 i'm guessing it'll be a 289 based on the air although anything's possible because it may have had an engine conversion this is the same model they used in the film bullet apart from this is a notchback meaning it has a boot lid or a trunk rather than being a fastback uh, the 67 to 68 you can always tell by the sort of hockey stick lights at the back where they bend in and then come back out towards the bumper but what an absolutely gorgeous car. Obviously, typically left-hand drive, as it should be, from where it's coming, uh, the country it's come from, and automatic as well. You've got to love a Mustang. I think there's a couple more than here today. I just uh, haven't actually managed to find those yet. But truly desirable car for an awful lot of people. And one of the ones that, if I could, I'd be going home in today. Of all the cars I expected to maybe see today, this certainly wasn't one of them. The DeSoto Fluid Drive. So this will be automatic, I'm guessing, but it'll have a fluid drive line rather than a, a torque converter or anything else like that. 
but what a wonderful looking car slightly modified and looking all the better for it, it actually fits in the screen of the camera as well it's a fantastic car, I certainly never thought I'd see one of these here today windows are down so we'll have a quick peek inside jukebox dashboard what a wonderful car well you definitely won't see many of those disorders on the roads over here in the UK so when you're watching this video if you were down here today and I've mentioned your car featured your car or if you've seen your car in the background leave a comment below let me know which one was yours and if it is one of the ones I featured on the video obviously the way the amount of cars that are here all I'm doing is going around and picking obviously the American cars and anything that stands out to me as something I personally like to have seen and like to see here. But this place truly, as last time back in March, it truly does have something for everyone, no matter what you're into, no matter what kind of car you own or you like or you would like to own. There's a selection of them all here. You can find anything to keep yourself happy while you're here at somewhere like Rustable. Not that I'm biased at all, but I found a Mark III Cortina JXL by the looks of it from 1971, possibly 1972. Don't know if it's a 2 litre or the 1.6. Let's have a quick look at the back. It doesn't say. Let's guess that it's a 2 litre GXL. The Mason car would have been an early one. It's uh, the slope away dashboard and some period accessories in there as well. There's a packet of silk cut cigarettes if uh, you remember those. Vinyl roof looks to be in good condition. What an amazing car. Like I say, I'm not biased at all. The fact that I've got one of these on the drive at home, although mine's not a JXL. What a wonderful car. It's one of the coolest cars Ford ever built. A couple of scimitars there. Obviously, early 76 and a 77 by the looks of them. You can tell the different design between the two. And I found a Mark II Mondeo. Great condition. Nice as easy, so I'll come down in a Mark 1. I wonder if we can find the owner and uh, get them together later with the rest of the Mondeos we'll come down with so we can get a photo of all generations of Mondeo together. Now another vehicle that you never really see anywhere on the roads in the UK, not on a day-to-day -day basis anyway, is the Fiat 500A. For those in the know, you'll know exactly what it is. For those who don't know, it's also commonly known as the Fiat Topolino. Now a lot of them in America were converted into drag cars back in the day and spent that time with extended chassis racing up and down the racetracks with huge V8s in them. This particular one that I've just found here is not only a Fiat Topolino, but it appears to be a Fiat Topolino. Would it be a convertible or a cabriolet? Absolutely <laughs> astounding condition. Another one of those cars you just don't see anymore. It's so small. But the interesting thing about this one is, as original as it looks, and as original as it appears, in the back window, there is a National Hot Rod Association sticker. So whether he's a fan of the Topolino because he's seen them racing, or whether he has one that maybe he races, or she races, is hard to tell. But it's certainly a pleasure to see one of the little nice, as it's known, or the Fiat Topolino, otherwise known as the Fiat 500A. Another one that you don't see many of anymore is one of these a standard Flying Light 12 drophead coupe. Amazing looking vehicle. Lovely pair of old school Ford sitting here, Mark 1 Escort, and yet another Mark 3 Cortina. Oh, it's nice to see old school Fords popped up together like that. Absolutely fantastic. L Reg on this Cortina, so that'll make it 1973. Confirmed by the tax disc in the window. Lovely interior. I don't think this is the GXL though. No, it's the XL. Still has the black vinyl roof on it. Dog dish hubcaps, original steel wheels. Lovely car. And here's yet another Mark III Cortina. Now this time a later one with a square headlight. Definitely turning into a car with a show is going to be the Cortinas this particular occasion. Yeah, definitely a late model. It's got the uh, the facelift headlights, the facelift dashboard, which is the same as the dashboard that came in the Mark IV, badged up as an XLE Big 6, which would seem to indicate that it's imported from South Africa. It's where mine came from, and it was only the Big 6s that you got over there in South Africa. So there's maybe a recent, a recent import or a vintage import. Certainly in amazing condition. Though. Now, of course, these days, everybody's used to seeing some form of Audi on the road somewhere. But without anybody seeing one of these, a Mi Audi is debatable. 
with its fur image, with its fur finish rather, cute fluffy ears and uh, shaped fluffy tail from Team Puss Puss Puss. Very different saying to me Audi. Can't be many of those on the road. And obviously I'm going to risk it. Yes, that is real fur on there. <laughs> You'd have to admire the sense of humour that you have to have to drive the Audi. But why not? It's all about having a bit of fun with a the car. There's nothing wrong with enjoying yourself with your car. And that truly does stand out as being well and truly unique. It's a wonderful Skoda Combi here. Never seen one of these before, know very little about them. No idea what year it is. If you know what year it is, any information about it, leave it in the comments below. What an astounding looking car though. Definitely well packed out with stuff in the back as well. Now amongst the myriad and varied selection of cars that are here today, there's one in this particular row. Stands out like a sore thumb. No, it's not the rat rodded Renault of the Ford Capri. It's this beauty here that takes up more than its fair share of space in a parking bay. This wonderful 1978 Lincoln Continental two-door. And being from the late 70s, it's in the wonderful shade of brown. Absolutely massive. This more than likely will have the 460cc engine in it. So it'll be a 7.2 litre, I would have thought. Absolutely amazing. And so long down the side of it as well. I bet that wasn't a cheap drive here this morning and that. Now, the previous section you've just seen was the Mayfair car park and the visitor's car park. It got a bit chilly, so I nipped back the car, put a jacket on, and I'm now wandering around the Van den Plas car park, or the Van den Plas car park area. And one of the first things I found that stands out is this orange 1972 or 73 Morris Marina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Morris Marina, super. And lo and behold... It's even rarer because it's an automatic, if you can see that through the glass there. What amazing condition that's in. Of course, you have 4x4 and Land Rover owners. Well, of course, unless there's a Land Rover in the field somewhere. Soft top, rollover bar. Seeming that could well be original paint on it. It's a nice looking one. And as I said, it's not a car show, there's not a lounge over here somewhere. And of course, it's the, uh, the car you always promised yourself. So popular, if I can get in with all the crowds. Mark 1 Ford Capri GT. But not only is it a Mark 1 GT, it's a 3.1, which makes it even rarer as well. A wonderful looking car. A 6V6 in there. It's a very nice looking Mark 1 Cavalier from either 79 or 80. When did you last see one of these? Not only that, but it's a two door. Now, does that make it a Cavalier or does that make it a Manta? I think it's a Cavalier. Yes, it is. 1600L two door Cavalier. In amazing condition. Surely there can't be many of those left. Now, as well as it not being a car show if there's not a Land Rover somewhere, it's also not a proper car show if there's not a Morris Minor or an MG somewhere in the parking lot or somewhere on the field. So here's a selection of Morris Miners from the Morris Minor Young Driver owners. In various realms of condition, all absolutely marvellous though, and a pleasure to see, as usual. Without the Morris Miners, the Land Rovers and the MGs, you wouldn't have most of the cars we would get here. They're adorable look, uh, look at the cars, great to work on, great to own, and a whole bunch of fun to drive around in as well. Now, as the sun comes out, found this Mustang GT. 
S197. The bra fitted over the front of the bonnet there to protect it from stone chips. What a nice looking car. These became really popular. It was one of the first Mustangs that Ford released that was designed as a retro look of the what the Mustang used to be like. And I think from the ones that Ford have released since this, this is one of the more the most more modern cars that looks more like an original Mustang than any other does. Certainly love to get my hands on one of those. What a nice thing. You know when I said there was actually something here for everybody, no matter what you like, no matter what you're into. There truly is really something here for everybody. Standing on the other side of this camera right now, there's a double decker Leyland bus, a fire engine, and to complete the trio, a selection of American police cars, all Crown Victorias. So starting with the bus. Anybody remember these? Leyland Alexander? You remember getting on one of these when you were going to school or going to work? And then of course, the Dennis fire engine. Everybody's seen these. Driving down the street, sirens going, lights blaring. But of course, the main thing here are these Ford Crown Victoria police replicas. I'm seeing replicas, they may not be, there's no one that's here to ask. There could well be genuine American police cars imported through. You've got to love the nudge bars. If only we were out and have things like that on our vehicles over here. Always a pleasure to see. I did hear them coming in earlier this morning, all sirens blazing and all lights on once I got into the private land, obviously. Absolutely amazing to see three police cars together. Now, one of the few English cars that looks American and certainly has American styling are these old Vauxhall Cresters. If you look at this in the right light and you squint a little bit, it could almost be reminiscent of a 55 Chevy. Maybe with overtones of a 57 Chevy or a 56. But uh, amazing car. Obviously the way it was designed with that wraparound windscreen cuts into the door. So when you open that and get in, you do normally tend to bash your knee on the windscreen as you're getting into the car. Fins on the back of it. This one looking resplendent in two-tone paintwork. What a lovely car. Now there is another Vauxhall Cresta here. This one, slightly different in as much as it's sort of a, a, a dusty pink colour. Just heading towards that one now to catch that. And then we'll see what else there is hanging around. And here it is. Another marvellous example of 50s design and 50s style and by Vauxhall. Another Cresta this time. Two-tone pink and grey paintwork. I don't know if the pink will come up very well on camera because of the way the sun's shining. What an absolutely astounding looking car. Just imagine those running around on the roads back in the day. And of course the beauty of Rustaville is you just never know what's going to show up. Now if you live in North Northumberland, a little bit further up the road from me, you may recognise this Volvo hearse with the flames on the front of it. Now I've seen the videos, he does have a channel. I can't for the life of me remember the guy's name or the name of the channel but I'm sure if you're anywhere near Wooler and you've seen this you'll know exactly whose it is. Feel free to tag him in the video if you're watching this and you do know who he is. It'd be nice for him to say that I've videoed his hearse with it being decorated the way it is. Gotta love a hearse. So practical. Size the boot. You now this J plate is Volkswagen Beetle. It's got all of the accessories. Absolutely wonderful. It's been lowered. It's got the lugger track sitting above the back window. It's got the cooling blind in the back window. The engine's all cleaned, polished. A little bit of Jack Daniels in there as well. Absolutely amazing car. Got the aircon system on the side of the door there. Wonderful colour. Like I say all the accessories, the air guards, you can have the window open and not let the dogs get in or out. Got all the packaging in the back. <laughs> Truly a wonderful model. And if we look inside the frunk, as I believe it is, you've got the glasses on the firewall there, a tin of bottle of Jack Daniels, a couple of games to play if you get bored when you're at a car show, picnic basket. What an astounding car. I did see that coming in this morning. It sounds absolutely fantastic when it came in. And of course, it's always nice to see 
an old Mark 1 Escort. Now, a little bit of interest and fun fact, you may or may not know that Ford never actually built a Mark 2 Ford Escort estate. All the Mark 2 Ford Escort estates were Mark 1 bodies with the Mark 2 front panels on them. But this one is in absolutely astounding condition. Not a ripple anywhere, no sign of rust anywhere. Possibly banded wheels on the back. What a gorgeous car. And then there's this wonderful Volvo 240. Now if you follow Whiteland Restorations, or if you watch a lot of Whiteland Restorations information, you'll know about the Volvo 200 series that they've put together. This is equally as nice. I do like that. Subtly done. All the right mods, lovely wheels on it. I do like that. You certainly don't see many of those anymore, not in that condition. And of course, it's not often at all you see a Land Rover Discovery camper van. What an amazing thing. Didn't even know they built one of these. Complete with hanging basket at the back. I like that. I really do. Not many of them around. Now, being a big fan of American cars, obviously that leads me into hot rods and custom cars. And this little Hillman Husky is absolutely astounding. I really do like the way that's been put together. The flares on the wheel arches, the alley cat wheels, shaved door handles, tinted windows. What a wonderful looking thing. Certainly do like that. It's a wonderful way of doing it. Now behind me here is the Jaguar Heritage Centre. Now the last time I was here, back in March of this year, did a video of both floors in there. I'll leave a link to that up here so you can watch that if you want to, because I've been around there, no need going again. I don't think anything's changed in there. Also, as well as that, I was in that part of the museum as well, and I did the downstairs in that side of the museum. So I'll leave a link to that as well because they have their own playlist so if you want to see both of those i'll put a link up and you can watch both of those in the meantime though if you've enjoyed this video if you found it informative don't forget to press the like button on the way out and consider subscribing to the channel for now i'll see you in the next one bye for now